Hi, Kevin here. It's freezing cold outside, so we're going to have dinner in front of the fireplace tonight. And I'm fixing polpettine. Now, polpettine is the Italian term for little meatballs that are flavored with lemon zest, lemon juice, parsley, and Parmesan cheese. Totally delicious. Now, normally, when I make polpettine, I use ground chicken for the meat, and I serve them on a bed of cannellini beans. But when I went to the supermarket this morning, they had no ground chicken, and they had no cannellini beans. Welcome to pandemic cooking. So we're going to use whatever I could find, which was ground turkey. This is a 1.3 uh, pound package. And for the beans, I'm going to use Great Northern. All right, and here's how I'm preparing the beans. All right, so what I have here are two 15.5 ounce cans of Great Northern beans. And again, use cannellini if at all possible. Uh, and I did drain and rinse the beans. And then I put them in this bowl. And now I'm just going to flavor them up a little. So I want some kosher salt, just a pinch, and a small pinch of black pepper some olive oil, just a drizzle, and some garlic paste. Oops. Maybe two teaspoons of the garlic paste. You could use fresh garlic, of course. I just like this because it's uber convenient. All right, then, I'm going to cover this with cling film. And then I will pop this into the microwave shortly before serving time. And then I'll stir all of the seasonings and the oil and the garlic paste into the beans. All right, let's move on to the polpettine. Right, for the polpettine, Here's the ground turkey, and again, this was 1.3 pounds, but one pound would do. And I wanted to tell you that in Italy, uh, polpettine is typically made with ground pork. So I think the turkey will work out just fine. Okay, then I want to add one and a quarter cups of fresh breadcrumbs. And I just took slices of white sandwich bread and I ground them up in the food processor. In they go. And then I need the zest of one lemon, which I already have here. And then the juice of the lemon. Yeah, I like this lemon squeezing gadget. Very easy to use. And then what do we need? Kosher salt. One teaspoon. And then I need a quarter cup of fresh chopped parsley. I'm going to use slightly more than a quarter cup because I love fresh parsley. And then I need two generous tablespoons of Parmesan. It's just grated Parmesan. This is nothing fancy. It's not the real expensive Parmesan. I don't even think my crummy supermarket sells high quality Parmesan. Okay, and then I need some uh, thyme leaves, and I forgot to grab them, so hang on a moment. Okay, so one teaspoon of ground thyme leaves. I'm not ground, dried thyme leaves. 
thyme and lemon go very, very well together. All right. Now, I'm going to fetch my food prep gloves, and then I'm going to mix this all together with my hands. Okay, food prep gloves. Now, the last time I wore food prep gloves on uh, this cooking channel, uh, a couple of readers wanted to know why on earth I was wearing food prep gloves in my very own kitchen. And I have two reasons for wearing the gloves. First, I really don't feel like sticking my hands in raw poultry. And the other is because I want to be able to cut off the camera. And I don't want to get, I want to be able to just remove a glove and then turn off the camera. In other words, I don't want to put raw poultry on my camera. I hope that makes sense to you. Here we go. I think I could have put a little more parsley in this. And hold on, I'm going to do just that. Okay, here's the parsley. Of course, now I've contaminated that container of parsley. Oh well. Yeah, I hope you'll give this popetini a try someday. It really is delicious and so simple to make. Okay, we're good to go. So now I'm going to form this mixture into little balls. Now you can make the balls any size you like. I'm going to make mine, oh, the size of large cherry tomatoes, I guess. Or maybe ping pong ball size. And then what you do is after you've formed the ball, you flatten it gently, okay? And then I'm going to put these on a parchment-lined baking sheet. We won't be baking the polpatini. We will be frying them. But I just want to have the polpatini ready to go on some clean surface. Okay, I'll finish forming these, and then we'll come back and we will fry them off. All right, I managed to make 20 polpettine from that 1.3 pound package of turkey. So now, this next step is entirely up to you. I'm going to lightly flour the polpettine so that when I fry them, the uh, meatballs will develop a slight crust. And I have my flour in one of these little shaker canisters and it has a sieve on top so you can really control the amount of flour you put on these. And then flip them and then flour the other side. Okay, and I'm going to do that right now, and then when we come back, I'm going to move you over to the stove top. Sorry I'm making you watch me do all of this. Okay, just lightly flour them. And that's the great thing about this little shaker canister, is that you can really control how much flour you're using. because you don't want a lot of flour. You don't want gummy polpettine. All right, okay, now I'm going to move you over to the stove top. All right, I decided that rather than frying the polpettine on the stove top, I'm going to fry them in my electric skillet here. I have a lot, of, a lot more surface area in this skillet. So I'm going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. And my skillet is preheating to 350 degrees. And then I'm going to add about two tablespoons of butter. I 
I love this electric skillet. It's a Presto, it's 16 inches. Yeah, there's a lot of room in here. I use this skillet whenever I make oh, English muffins. And if you haven't made my English muffin recipe yet, I hope you will give that a try. All right, just going to let this butter melt. This is European style butter, by the way. I've really, I've fallen in love with European style butter. I used it when I made that, um, what was the cake I made yesterday? It was uh, not a Charlotte mold, it was a, oh yes, the Victoria sandwich cake. And I've preheated my oven to 200 degrees, that way I can keep the pulpitine warm after they fry. So in they go. And I'm just leaving a little bit of space between each little meatball. Now earlier I mentioned that my supermarket did not have ground chicken. They were actually out of a lot of things. And I don't honestly know if it's because we're in a pandemic because my local supermarket is really poorly run. I mean, they were out of things even pre-pandemic. They were poorly run even in the best of times. So probably you can find ground chicken at your own much nicer supermarket. Okay, I'm going to let these cook for about four minutes on each side just until they get good and brown and they are cooked through. And when that happens, we'll come back. All right, my pulpitine is all cooked. Uh, I let them brown for about two and a half minutes on the first side and about three and a half to four minutes on the other side. And let me tell you, they smell wonderful. You can really smell the lemon in them. So I'm going to put this into the 200 degree oven just to keep them warm. And I'm going to pop the Great Northern beans, which were supposed to have been cannellini beans, in the microwave for about three minutes just to warm them. And then I'll stir in the garlic paste and the salt, pepper, and olive oil. And then we'll be ready to eat. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, we're in the dining room. I've lit a fire, and I wanted to show you what our dinner looks like on the plates. So here's the pulpitini on the bed of great northern beans. And I did top the pulpitini with a tiny amount of spaghetti sauce. And I have some baby spinach greens, lightly dressed. That was my serving. Here's Mr. Fox's serving, same setup. And then we're having some Cabernet wine to go with the meal. And for dessert, we're going to tuck into some of the Victoria sandwich cake that I made for you the other day. Okay, Mr. Fox has told me he does not wish to be on camera this evening. So it's just me for now, but I wanted to have a taste of the pulpitine for you. It's very, very good. Now, as I said earlier, I usually make pulpitine with ground chicken, but it does work with ground turkey. And of course the beans are wonderful, they're nice and garlicky. And the pulpitini has that wonderful scent of lemon. It's just, it's really delicious, okay? So I hope you will give this easy dinner a try someday. And thanks so much for watching. I'm supposed to ask people to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And 
I'll see you next time. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.